Well, we had Roaring Kitty out today tweeting up a storm, some very cryptic tweets, and, well, Meme Stock Mania is back at it again with their white vans, up 74% in GameStop, and AMC was up a whopping 78% today. Was there a hidden message within those cryptic tweets? We're going to dive into that on today's Stock Market Brief Show, and we're going to also analyze the S&P 500 to get you some levels to prepare for some big macro events to come. All that and more on today's Stock Market Brief Show. Let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, oh, welcome back. So yeah, some of these meme stops started to take off again while the markets kind of remained flat for the day. And I want to just show you get really quick if you're if you're new here awesome if you're not new here you probably heard of this other video but these names specifically amc and gamestop you could have found these names and setups before they shot off um which we did right if you go if you're in the discord group which is right here the swing trading community there's a pinned comment there in the description it's not an alert service so don't think of it like that but we did see these light up and what put them on my radar specifically was coming from the party starter scan. The party starter scan looks for stocks to set up, right? Unusual volume to come in and to be able to get into a name before the party starts and then before the cops obviously show up. And you can see here on May 8th, we talked about GameStop and AMC and both of those things took off like rocket ships. So the party starter scan, once again, three years later, strikes harder than ever. Now, what was the catalyst? Well, we had that Roaring Kitty or Deep Value guy back at it again with some tweets, but they were very cryptic tweets and people are now questioning whether or not he's actually talking about GameStop or something else. You can see he posted just a bunch, I should say, lots of big, <laughs> lots of big motion picture <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing because it's kind of a joke, but if it ends up being true, it's going to be funny and I'll walk you through it. But a lot of big box office hits, just cryptic type of videos. And a lot of people hate this type of stuff. We got a lot of people's stuff, you know, that's when it surges 90% because of the return of this and the return of that. It's fueled by financial nihilism, which is, I guess, just questioning the value and legitimacy of the financial system. You got to understand these type of things, they happen in markets, they've always happened in markets, you get these short squeezes, you get massive, you know, pumps and massive dumps, and you can either, you know, be really against it or try to find ways to prepare yourself to be able to trade and manage risk when these type of situations uh, occur. And now the reason why I'm laughing a little bit was because the Roaring Kitty, right, posted some big office hits today. In fact, lots of them. <laughs> and I said Big Lots. And it was kind of a joke because I know that Big Lots is a highly shorted name. It's actually you know, a short interest of around plus 40%, about 6.5 days to cover. And you can see right now, it's actually kind of basing out over here, putting in some higher lows, getting very tight with some good volume that came in today. And to me, when I look at this, I'm like, oh, that kind of actually looks like how the setup looked for, for like GameStop and AMC back in the day in 2021, where you had, you know, it was getting crushed to the downside. And then all of a sudden you started seeing pockets of some very strong volume in there. And then I noticed, hey, you know, it, it operates a lot of discount stores. Obviously, I know what Big Lots is, but even in 20, February 2022, sorry, February of 2024, they acquired Hearthsong, this toy inventory. And this got me thinking, okay, they acquired a toy company. And I don't know if it's that big of a deal or not, but I did look at like, okay, let's see how some of the toy companies are, are performing. And I looked up Hasbro because that's the one that first came to mind. And we saw this earnings report not too long ago and it was a huge gap up and price action's actually just been digesting. And this one I just recently put out on the trade ideas because it actually looks pretty decent, right? It gapped way up. It started consolidating. It's getting very tight here. So, and then we have an inside trading day. So if we break out of the inside trading day, maybe, you know, that, that tries to come back in and fill this gap or potentially restrike that swing high on earnings. And if it breaks down, well, then obviously uh, watch out. And, and then another thing came to mind. I was like, well, big lots, right? Somebody mentioned on my Twitter feed, did you know Michael Burry invested in big lots? Well, then I looked it up and I was like, holy crap, February 15th, Michael Burry also took a stake. And, you know, if you know, this guy, right, Roaring Kitty or Deep F and Value, his original thing was talking a lot about Michael Burry and how much he was a fan of him, I guess. And he was invested in GameStop at that time. So if you didn't know that, Michael Burry made a crud ton of money off of that GameStop move. So is Big Lots going to be a big one? Hey, maybe so, but, you know, fun narratives. But we, we don't know, so you still got to continue to manage that risk. 
Okay, that was fun. Let's, uh, let's hop into just the performance of the S&P 500 today. So it was unched on the day, unchanged, right? S&P 500 was flat on the day. You might be looking, well, look at the VIX was up. It was up 8.3%. Well, understand the VIX doesn't take into account the you know short-dated uh, options, but it was up on the day. And this makes sense to me because implied volatility typically rises, right? It typically rises when you go into uh, uh, unknown events and the unknown events, you know, we have Tuesday and Wednesday coming up with core inflation on Wednesday or inflation numbers. And then we have PPI uh, numbers. So PPI on Tuesday, tomorrow, and then Wednesday. And what happens here is you typically get implied volatilities to, to increase and not even from the long end, but from the short end too. So I'm going to share with you what I share with my swing trading community every day. These are the daily expected moves going into tomorrow's trading session. So if you want to screenshot this and put the upper level, lower level, and even the two Sigma levels up on your charts, you can do so. I have the products like SPX, ES, NQ, Ruddy, and then SPYQ, IWM there too as well. Cause those are the, they trade the daily uh, options. Now, IWM is kind of new into that. It was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. Let's continue on and take a look at some stuff that ha has relationships with inflation, right? So we're getting inflation data coming out. So I like to just peek into things like copper, oil, and so forth. And look at copper. Copper broke out of this little tight contraction pattern and it's sitting at new highs for the year. This thing continues to scream higher and higher. So is this going to, you know, potentially put pressure on, on these inflation numbers. Well, that's a maybe, but in oil, right, it's a huge, huge component of like the CRB index. And this is came, came down quite a bit in the last, you know, since April, but now we're starting to base out, break out of this wedge pattern. We saw some strength today after the prior trading day, I believe that was a Friday, a close on the low. So we'll see here if we can get, get some momentum and head back. And if that is the case, right, if oil does continue to rise, we showed this chart on a prior video that I found very interesting, but look at how oil, that's the black line. The green and red is the... Um, the green and red, sorry, is the 10-year the yield. And what you'll notice here is the turns in oil, right? Actually kind of what happened shortly thereafter is the yields followed. So you can see over here more recently, oil started to fall in early April. And then not too long you know, later, uh, the 10-year yields start to follow. So if oil starts to, to rise here, maybe that's giving us insight that we might see the 10-year yield move up. And that does, in fact, put pressure on on markets that we've seen in the past with the rising dollar, rising yields, it's put pressure on the S&P 500, for example, and just growth growth names. If we take a look at the 10-year yield right now, the price momentum oscillator is crossed down. It is bearish, but it is above that zero line. And it's kind of holding the lower range of this channel, potentially flagging out here. But if we do start to see oil rise, perhaps we can try to get back above that 4.5 or 45 level and potentially see a pop higher there. If we go into other kind of just commodities that we've been seeing rapid rises in, which, you know, I, core inflation, they exclude food and energy, but still like this is this, we're looking at stuff that affects everyday people here, like oil, right? Rising 10 year yield, obviously wheat uh, would be another one, a huge move in wheat. It's at a 2024 high right now. It just hit a new high today, but this has been on a massive kind of squeeze to the upside. And then we look at corn. Corn has been seeing a nice comeback here, but not so it's not like up on the year, but it's been coming quite off the February lows, seeing a little bit of a comeback there. So some inflationary things are rising. So it's going to be interesting to see how this report comes out come Wednesday. But we'll look at the expected moves once again, uh, either on a live stream tomorrow and or a daily stock market brief video, which by the way, I want to remind you, if you haven't done so already, if you like technical analysis, if you like intermarket analysis, if you like to be updated close to on a daily basis, make sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video too. This helps get it out to more people and it's you know, a way of showing your support to the time that puts into these videos. Take a look now at some gamma levels. Really the big levels to watch here is 5,200. Anything below that, I'd say, eh, let's be a little bit more bearish. Anything above it, I'd say we were bullish to 5,250 and then 5,300, which is that call wall. And you can see over here today, we got hung up at 5,240. That was actually a big zero date level as well as 5,220. And we kind of just bounced within the zero date levels today. Now going into tomorrow, like I said, 5,200 is going to be a key level. You want to hold that. Now, despite that, we have the gamma flip line currently at 5180. That was up from, I think, 5150 from the prior trading session. So we'll see where this updates tomorrow morning. I'll post that in the, the day trading pit in the Discord there too as well. And we'll go from, go from that level. But when we're in positive gamma territory above the flip line, dealers look to buy the dip, sell the rip, buy the dip, sell the rip. So if price comes down into 5200 or even down, comes kind of around it, 
you would still be looking for dealers to buy the dip, potentially commodity trading advisors and so forth, even potentially even corporations because of the buyback window. So you still have a lot of buying momentum. But if we get some sort of crazy surprise, obviously just, just manage risk as we see fit from those levels. Okay, if we get above 52.50 and can hold that, I think we target up to 5,300. That would make that make sense to me. But you know, prices ran far and fast in this month. We're already above and outside the monthly expected move for the S and P 500 for the spy, and we're above that rising five day moving average still. So above a flip line, above a rising five day moving average, all signs are pointing to you know strong, you know, good strength here. But it's also showing us like, hey, we may need a little bit more time for digestion as we run into these more type of binary events. Now, the weekly expected move for the S&P 500, 514 to the downside, 527, 68 to the upside. It's very frequent that we tag these levels. Last week, we exceeded the upper weekly expected move. And you can see we're pretty much unchanged on the week here. So to target one of these levels makes sense to me. Because of the current context of the market, I would think that we're going to go target up further, right? But because also it's a little extended, we're getting into a very interesting time period. So how do you how do you approach this? Well, you can trade, you can you can approach it differently due to with your position sizing, right? So for me, example, I look for nice setups, various setups that we talked about. Um, I mean, we've been talking about a lot of different setups on my live streams on in the Discord too, where I posted kind of like my market thoughts and tight list walkthrough where I give a bunch of different updates on various charts, but I look for tight charts, right? So for example, here we go, like we're tightening up, we're coiling up here, right? If we break out to the upside, I'd be bullish. But if we start breaking back down to the downside, I'd be looking for retags and I'd look for, you know, a higher low after that and then breaking back through those points. So it's all about being very tactical and focusing in on your position sizing because you can get, you know, you can be right, you can be, you can say I'm bullish here and, and it could go down, but you can still be right later on, right? But you can also be bearish here and it could go up and you could be right later on. So it's very important to say, hey, when will I decide to get out? And if I'm wrong, when will I re-enter in if, if it starts to turn my way again? So that's how I would approach this. Now, uh, one last thing I want to finish off with is the sailor to shift tool. This is my indicator that I like to use for identifying potential changes in trend with Bitcoin. And Bitcoin, a lot of things that highly correlate with it, for example, Ethereum and various crypto equities. Well, Bitcoin from an absolute perspective down here, it's just been looking like it's consolidating and flagging out from a weekly perspective. We had our sell signal, sell trigger not too long ago. The market pulled down a little bit. Now it's consolidating. I wanted to just point out it's only Monday, but we're right there above at that line. And that line right there is the buy signal. Now, you technically have to close above it. So for my strategy, it has to close above it. And then the following week has to break the high of the week prior. So there's still time, obviously, but I'm bringing this up because it is starting to turn. It looks like it could potentially go positive here. And if that actually is the case, I do know a lot of traders that use different rates of changes, right? This is the four week. I've seen them use three week. I've seen them use daily timeframes instead of weekly. And, and I'm just pointing that out from my perspective, you know, from a longer term perspective here, it is starting to turn as it stands right now, but there's no official s signal, right? And there's no official trigger yet. It would have to be by week's end when the new week obviously starts. But I just wanted to call that out because it doesn't look all too bad as it stands. All right, everybody, hope it helps out, gives you some insights into the markets. Understand that the whole you know idea behind all this stuff is is somewhat of a joke, but it was interesting pulling up the chart of big lots. And you know if we are gonna get short squeezes and more short squeezes into this summer, it's good to look at these high interest names high short interest names and and look to see how they're consolidating and back into the risk. Never take, you know, do what's up, do what you want to do. But I personally would never take, you know, a YOLO type position, you know, risk it all to make, to make some money. I, it's just not my style, but that's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Cheers. See you later.